remember something that I, I usually don't do, give you some extensive reading today. And so I'm going to, as you know, it is our custom to stand for the reading of the word because we, we reverence and honor God's word. Another person back and say, we don't say, we honor God's word here. And so I'm going to ask you that if you can't stand, please stand. If you can't stand, I do understand that you can't. Pastor Mark, I said I was going to say this for, for after service, but can we try something new for Sunday school over the summertime? And let's have Sunday school over here so the air can stay on. But I am hot. I mean, I'm already wet. I ain't preached the word yet. And so if they sit over there, so the air won't get to them right away. And we can leave the air on, especially when it's going to be like 85 degrees. You know, when black folk, I'm sorry, when church folk get together, <laughs> we get hot quick. And so this way, we can leave the air on. We have fun this way. And we can put the, the uh, podium right there and talk to them that way. Is that okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Unless the air hits the teaching ahead, the then we got to figure something out. We'll, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. I'll find out. My brother, can you feel the air right there? Is it too cold? You like, praise Jesus. <laughs> okay, some folk got sinus problems. We can't stand right there. Okay, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. Matthew's Gospel, the 14th chapter. Are you there? Yes, sir. <clears throat> We're going to read the steps to me for a few moments today. Look at verse 24. Tell the person by saying, Move your hand, let me see. Bust it out and set them free. Are you in verse 24? It says, But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. Somebody said, They were in trouble. They were in trouble saying, it is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him, saying, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Another person back to him said, he walked on the water. He walked on the water. <clears throat> I want to go to our new series of lesson today. Look at the person by your tell him, say, neighbor, neighbor you, must prepare you must prepare for where you're going. For where you're going. Let's pray. Right. Father of heaven, we thank you again for this time of sharing your word. Father, as always, it is our sincere prayer that you would speak to our heart today in a clear and concise manner. Spirit of the living God, speak to us clearly. God, we hide behind the cross. We pray that we only say those things which you would give us to say. God, think through us, speak through us, we give you glory in advance. In Jesus' name we do pray. Somebody say amen. 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 You may have your seat in the presence of our Lord. Preparing for where you are going. Notice the person by them say, you got to prepare for where you're going. This morning, as I introduced this new series uh, to you all this morning, I pray that you pay, pay close attention because... I am going to, for many of you all, hit you right where you live because I believe that for many of us, one of the reasons our lives are not where we want them to be is not because God has not given us a destiny, but because there are some things that are out of order. Amen. Another person by them says, time to get things in order. And I believe that this series, you all, will help us <clears throat> to position ourselves for the next dimension of life that God wants to take us. Let me ask you, look at me, how many of you know that God has a new direction to take your life? Yeah. Notice the person back down and say, better things are here, better things are here. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but I live in the place of expectation. Yeah. Sister Barbara, I have learned that I have gotten too old to just live my life casually. When I was in my teens and in my twenties, I didn't mind just kind of living life casually because I thought that I had a long time to go. Yeah. Let me help the young folks out. I just, listen, I know when you were in your teens, you thought you had a long time to live, but uh, tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Yeah. Wow. Another person back there tomorrow is not promised to you. Everybody isn't going to live to be as old as Mother Boyce is. Thank God for 98 years of Amen. life, but everybody isn't going to be that old. Come on, somebody. 
you know, when I was coming up, they had an old saying, they said, here today, gone tomorrow. But I mean, folks understand that now, it's here today, gone today. The Bible says that our life, your life is as a vapor. It appears only for a moment and then it vanishes away. What God is simply trying to get us to understand that nothing lasts forever. And that you must make the most out of your life while you have life. Ah, uh, does the person might come say, make something out of your life while you have life. Hear me, family, one of the greatest travesty, travesties will be to come to the end of your life, Master Gina, and realize that there were some things that I did not accomplish over my life. I know there are some folks, many of you right now have dreams and things that you believe that God is putting in your life and that God wants you to do. And you'd be surprised by how many folks go get on their deathbed, and it is not that death kills them, but it is regret that kills them. Oh, uh, come on, there are a whole lot of folk who are going to be in the hospital, and the spirit of fitting to is going to kill them. Y'all ain't talking back to me. How many folk have ever said, I'm fit to? Uh, I know it's not you, but tell the person behind us, it's not you, but the person behind us. Oh, yeah, there's a whole lot of folk, Brother Thomas, who live their life with the spirit of fitting to. As soon as I can, I'm fitting to get me a good job. And as soon as I'm, I, I can, I'm fitting to go back to school. And as soon as I can, I'm fitting to do this. I'm fitting to start a business. And you end up on your deathbed uh, embracing the, the mark the spirit of fitting to. And fitting to is what kills you, not necessarily the devil. And what the devil tells you is that if God really meant what he said about you having a destiny in your life, then you would have completed the things that God has assigned to your hands. Now understand, family, well, you and I must understand that God is never into mess. Oh, I'm trying to talk back to church, but I'll say it again. God is not into blessing mess. Let me see if I can say it like this. If God were going to bless your mess, if an outsider who looked in and saw all the contentment and the mess going on, they would say, if God can bless them and they a mess, then why should I be saved? After all, God can bless me too while I'm still in my mess. And so understand, family, for the believer, listen, for the believer, it is imperative that you and I understand that if we are going to be in the will of God and have God's best, then you and I must position ourselves to uh, for this next level, this All next right. dimension of life, right. uh, by making sure that you and I are in the will of God. Yeah. Ask the person, I say, are you sure you're in the will of God? I strongly believe you that God has given all of us a specific assignment, that particular thing he has called us to do. Yeah. Let me ask you, how many folks can decree that God has given you something specific to do in the body of Christ? Uh, ask the person by and say, did God give you anything to do besides sit on the seat? Let me help your theology out. Listen, God never created a bench member. Oh, I know some of y'all say, oh, Pastor, I'm going to only come to church, and I'm going to come in, I'm going to occupy this seat, and I'm going to hold this seat down. I'm going to hold my row down, and after church, I'm going to be the first one running out the door. But how many folks understand that God did not save you out of the mess that you were in? God did not pull you out of the kingdom of darkness and bring you over into his mouth. But it's like God did not send his son to die on the cross for your sins. God did not save you with your messed up, jacked up self. God did not pull you out of sin and hell and degradation. God did not do everything that he did for you just to save you and have you be a, 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 a part of the do nothing committee. Oh, tell the person like that say, it's time to find something to do. And so understand, God has given all of us, listen, in your life, there is a specific assignment attached to your life. Have you ever asked the question why the enemy attacks your life the way he does? Barbara, have you ever asked the question why is the enemy always seem to bring turmoil and contention in my life? Have you ever asked the question why is the devil always picking on me? Maybe it's just me. Anybody? 
Anybody ever wonder why the devil looks like he always shows up in your house at the wrong time? Have anybody ever asked the question, why does it look like the devil always find a way to bring stuff up in your life at the most unappropriate time? It is because the enemy understands that since you've been saved, the devil knows that God has attached something to your life. And the devil knows that if I can get you from off your track of destiny before your destiny gets started, then you will blame God for not getting you to where you are going. Tell the person, I say, you got to fight through it. You got to fight through it. Even in our own lives, all of us should have the uh, potential to set goals for our life. Yes, Lord. Listen, man, set a goal for your life. Set a goal for your life. Listen, if you don't have a goal for your life, child of God, something is wrong with you. Let me help out all of our unmarried sisters. Don't hook up with a guy who does not have a goal for his life. Because hear me, if he does not have a goal for his life, how can a man going nowhere take you anywhere? And y'all ain't talking back to me. All the single girls should have said, Amen, Pastor. Come on, you need to tell me a guy who does not have a goal for his life, somebody who does not know where he's going with his life, somebody who's on a corner trying to make sure the sidewalk don't move. How in the world? I don't understand how a girl to the curve can have a baby by a joker who his only job is to make sure the mailman, that the, that the mailbox don't move. Come on. Come on, he stands on the corner store to make sure the store don't shift gears. Come on, he stands in front of the house all day long to make sure the sidewalk don't shift when you ain't looking. Come on, if a man does not have a destiny, does not have a goal for his life, there is no way he can move you from here to there and he can't move himself. But isn't it amazing how the enemy always seemed to fool us and to make us believe, listen, so, so that you can change him and you can make a better man out of him. Listen, baby, if his mama couldn't make him better, you can't make him better. Oh, y'all ain't talking back to me. Listen, there is no way you can build an old sap. Once that sap is bent, that dope is already crooked. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Listen, once that joker has already decided he's going to lean and hold up the house, he ain't going to move. Listen, if I was going, if I was going to give myself away, at least I'm going to do better than what I already got. Oh, I was going to talk back church. If I'm going to get the, oh dear God, if, if I'm going to lay down with a dog, I guarantee the dog don't have no flea. Come on, you think I'm going to, you think I'm going to lose a BMW and get a Volkswagen? The devil is a liar. Oh, we're going to talk back church today. And so what you want to do is if you're going to hang out with somebody, get somebody to be a part of your life, right. make sure that they have a destiny yeah. and have a plan set for them because, listen, that's the way to make the right decision. Yeah. If I look at your goals, your plans, and, you, and I don't think I can follow your plans, right. then there ain't no reason for you us to hook up. Right. you ain't talking back to me. Listen, one of the reasons I met this girl is because she was a smart woman. Come on, she was smart. Come on. This is that she was smart, had a good job, praise the Lord. That is hurt now. <laughs> I'm just saying. When I met her, she was making $40,000 a year. I was like, girl, I do. I do. Come on. I ain't no, I ain't no stupid Negro. I mean, man, come on, somebody. Come on, like, what, you making 40? Shoot, girl, but you're 40, my 40 is 80. Shoot, come on, girl, say I do, and we can go make a baby right now. Come on, making sure you won't leave me. You stuck with me. You know ain't talking back to me. Come on. But see, when y'all didn't hear, and what she was saying, she said, yeah, this boy got a saw and a hammer. Oh, he can make more than 45. I'm going to stay right here. If the house break down, I can save our money. I can like, be like Jesus. He will fix it after a while. Where's my scripture here? Lives, we need to have strength. 
structure. Yes. Something in our lives that's going to propel us and to move us from one level to the next level. Yes. Now, one of the reasons many of us all are stuck where we are is because we have not laid out a systematic plan uh -huh. that is designed to move us from one level to the next level. All right, all right. But what I also know is that most people go never prepare for where they're going. Hear me, family, if you don't prepare for where you are going, listen, you will be wandering in the wilderness like the children of Israel 40 years talking about God, I'll be glad when we get there. Uh -huh. Anybody, how much was it? When the kid was uh, uh, on road trip, the kid said, are we there yet? Yeah. How many of y'all tired of asking the question, are we there yet? Right. Could it be the reason you are not where God wants to send you is not because God is not going to do it, but because you have not positioned yourself and laid out the goals and the strategies for your life that's going to propel you there. Right. Tell the person, message, you must get a plan, get a plan. And, a goal, and a goal and push, and push to where you're going. Watch this. Go to Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs, never mind. I'll read it for you. Proverbs chapter 6, verse number 5 says this. The Bible says, Go to the ant, thou slugger. Watch this now. He says, Go to the ant, thou slugger. Consider her ways and be wise. Which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. Yeah. Now, let me give you the, uh, the uh, ERV version. It says, you lazy people. Uh, put the person back there, hang on, hang on, here we go, here we go. He said, you lazy Negro, it's like people. He said, you lazy people, you should watch what the ant does and learn from him. Ants have no ruler, no boss, and no leader. But in the summer, and together all their food and saving. Oh, what's the hell? Talk back to you. They gather their food and they save it. So when winter comes, they have plenty to eat. Now, you know how most of us do. Brother Ranch, we know how most of us do. Most of the people of color, we live a life of impression. And most of us live with the spirit of comparison -itis. In other words, I got to have more stuff than my neighbor. You'll be surprised by how many of God's people, they don't buy stuff because they need the stuff. They'll go and buy it because the person sitting by them bought one. You don't believe it? Take a watch this, watch this, watch this. Find somebody in the church who got on some new weed. I guarantee you next week somebody who's sitting right next to you go buy some fresh weed on Wednesday, get a put it in Thursday, go come to church late with our floor. You ever come in about, about 11 15, go pray the Lord, everybody. Come on. Because the spirit of comparison itis is in the land. Come on, you don't believe it? Buy, buy you a new suit. I guarantee you somebody who got jacked up credit and an old credit card going to buy them a new suit and say, Lord, please, Lord, pay the bill, Lord, pay the bill. But they want to come in church just to show you they can do what you do. And many of us never spend our lives preparing for tomorrow. Tell the person about it, you must spend your life preparing for tomorrow. I said, y'all, the other day, I challenged a young lady who had just got her new job. Young girl, this year, Preston Marks, is her very first job. And she said, yeah, I, I get my very first check Thursday. And my first question was, what are you going to do with it? All right. All right. All right. I said, did you write down what you intend to do with that money? I said, how much are you expecting? She said, I'm expecting $150. And I'm like, oh, Lord, poor baby. She has no clue she's going to still be broke when she gets paid. And she said, I'm expecting $150. I said, well, what do you intend to do? I said, what's the first thing you intend to do with that $150? She said, oh, I can tell you off the top of my head. You had to do, they decided 15-year-old kids start rolling their head. Oh, yeah, I can tell you what I'm going to do with it. I said, no, what I want you to do is write it down. I said, because if you don't make God first and your 
saving second. Your priorities are out of order. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Many of us make ourselves our first priority, and God is our last priority. Oh, I'm sorry. If God has any, if, if there's anything left, then we'll give God whatever's left. But how many folks will that God ought to always be our first priority? Now, watch this. After God is your first priority, your second priority should be you to save something for tomorrow. You say, Pastor, said I save for when you did? No, because some of y'all still before, and even start raining. Come on, it ain't even cloudy. You know, already spent the money. Ain't no, listen, even the weatherman said no rain for a week. You know, already spent your money. But once you make God your first priority, everybody in here, you ought to be putting something away. If it's nothing but five dollars, ten dollars a week, you should be putting something away. Now I know that's not real spiritual, but you're gonna be fifty years old, eighty years old, and be broke, having to pick up cans to survive because you didn't plan for tomorrow. But you put the person back and say, "Tomorrow's coming. Tomorrow's coming." She just said in Luke 14, verse 28, she just says, For which of you, intending to build a tower, watch this now, he said, intending to build a tower, set it not down first, and counted the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. But the Eric, he says, she just says, which of you have a dream of a better tomorrow, but did not plan for tomorrow. Come on, see, some of y'all are sitting in the cut waiting on somebody to die. Oh, I know that. I know that. You in the cut waiting, I'd be glad when they go on die so that I can get their inheritance. Oh, come on, you know, you know the boy we call the prodigal son who told his daddy, daddy, give me my inheritance right now. The custom was that you get it when the parent dies. Now, when he asked his father for his inheritance right now, what it would suggest to his father that, Daddy, I consider you dead already. And so I want what I'm owed right now because I can't wait till you die. And there are some folk who are sitting in the cut waiting for somebody to die so that they can leave you something and you can blow their money. Isn't it amazing how folk can blow your money? You can say, I told Lady Cassidy, girl, if I die, spend every dime on you. Y'all ain't talking back to me. I said, girl, if I proceed you, I probably won't. But if I do, I want you to give God his cut and spend the rest on you. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Let her go first. I'm going to show you. I'm going to buy a new car. <laughs> Give me a facelift, a tummy tuck, I ain't playing. Watch. I'm gonna come in looking real good. You might have to have me on like Shazam. Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't talking back to me. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna give all the kids a cut. I'm gonna give them five out. <laughs> but Jesus says, who gonna build a tower and don't sit down first and count up the cost. All right. All right. You cannot get to where you're going if you don't plan to get there. Right. Y'all missed that. You don't. You will. You will never get to where you want to go. You will never have your dreams come to pass if you don't prepare now for what's coming. Right. Well, this, it's amazing, you all, how many people want a miracle, the, or the miracle of success, but can't handle the misery that comes with it. Oh, I'm a bit better, better tweet right there. We oftentimes want the miracle of success, but can't handle the misery that comes with the success. Pastor, what do you mean? The Bible said in the book of Luke that an angel came to visit Mary and said, Hail Mary, thou art highly favored. Yes, all right, all right. The Holy Ghost will overshadow thee, and you will conceive a son. Mary said, how can this thing be, seeing that I know I'm a man? Right. Now, this she said, be it unto me according to thy word. Yeah. Now, the miracle was 
she got pregnant. But the misery was, watch this, she was ostracized. Come on, Joseph had to put her away. Come on, then now here it is, Jesus, the baby that she could not explain had to be born in a stable. Come on, and then as she had other kids, now her children have conflict. Come on, but then the kicker is, now Mary has to watch Jesus die. Yes, she got the miracle, but understand she had to go through some misery. Yes, All right. All right. Ask the person in my said, can you stand and be blessed? Yes, See, all of us are praying, God, please, God, please, God, give me a miracle. God said, I can give you a miracle, but can you stand the misery that's going to follow the miracle? Yes. Because, yes, God can give you a miracle, and I guarantee you he will. But the question is always, can you handle What's going to happen? That, what do you mean? Let God bless you with all the money you want. Somebody don't be hating. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor, how can you tell? You only have five cents now, and folks hate on you right now. Right. Can you imagine if God gave you ten dollars? Man, the fuck? Oh, I know how she got it. Come on, let God give you a promotion. Somebody gonna say, oh yeah, I wonder who she's sleeping with now. Come on, people are gonna always try to justify how you got to where you got. But you must understand that when God gives you a promotion, baby, misery comes with the miracle. You see, I've watched folks roll who celebrate, oh, praise God, God gave me a new car. Now what the miracle is, you got a new car, but you have bad credit. Oh, I would ask you to raise your hand, but don't lie in church. But there are some folks in this building who had jacked up credit, and they prayed, and God, God blessed them to get a car. And they say, oh, dear God, you gave me a miracle. But then comes the misery. Pastor, what's the misery? Three days later. Somebody say, car note, car note, car note. And now here it is, you struggling, you mad, you angry at God. Oh, dear God, these folk are sending me a car note again. Baby, how come you were shouting to break? Thank you, Lord. Oh. Wonderful can on, but oh, baby. 
comes so after the honeymoon is over with and he get on your last nerve, you're saying, Lord, I know what I said, but Lord, please take it back, Lord, take it back, take it back, take it back, Lord, please, Lord, I want you come on. Because what this it is possible to understand that with the miracle comes misery. Okay, you, you missed that one. You recall the man who was at the uh, uh, at the pool 38 years? The Bible says, Jesus says, the man was at the pool, y'all, 38 years, and after 38 years, this man could have fell over in the pool. And he told Jesus that I had no man to put me in. Now watch this. The miracle was Jesus healed him. It was the man's misery. If the man couldn't fall in the pool, watch this now, that means the man also couldn't take a shower. Think about it. Think about it. If the man is at the pool for 38 years, Mr. Hansen, at the pool for 38 years, waiting on the angel to trouble the water and can't get in the water, that means he didn't go home to shower. That means the man had to stay in the same place 38 years and not only the other folk around him stinking, he was stinking himself. You ain't talking back to me. Come on. I want you to get this. Because watch this. When you are prepared, when misery shows up, it is your preparedness that will handle your misery. Let me see if I can say it like this. Our president does not really care if America ever gets in a recession. You know why? He has over $10 billion in the bank. And so even if America have a bad credit rating, his is always good. All right. All right. Because ten billion dollars speaks values. I don't care what you are in the world. Right. The reason it hurts many of us is because we don't have how they ten dollars in the bank. Oh Lord, I would I I I I would love to go to some of your some of your uh, accounts and see how many times you went to the bank and pulled out five dollars here. You put out $10 here and $20 right. here. Come on. Right. And many times it is a mismanagement of our money. Amen. See, when I was a, a, a young man, one of the things my, my mother instilled in me, she says, she says, she, she, she says, take out your clothes today for church on tomorrow. All right. All right. What she was saying was, tomorrow is coming. And if God give us days, if you prepare today for tomorrow, you will save yourself at least an hour trying to pull clothes out, iron your clothes, get everything ready, fix your hair. You see, we have, there are four girls in the house. And I will fix all their hair the day before. You ain't talking back to me. See, my folks tell me it can't be done. I said, no, baby, no. You didn't prepare for tomorrow. Oh, I know, I, I know, I know y'all want to shout right now, but listen, she would comb all the hair. You know, we didn't have perms back then. She would get on, sit them down, get that, uh, that raw crown grease. Come on. How you supposed to call the, the raw crown grease? In the red container with the blue writing. Come on, and we had a comb and put it on the stove. It's called the hot comb. She would get them, them chillers and say, sit down here and tweet my legs. Get a comb, Sean, part the hair. Get the hot comb and get down there right by the roof. And she would get over there in that kitchen and go, shh. Sound like Popeye's frying. Come on. Shh. She pulled that hair back, bless God, until the hair got straight. Because you know ain't talking back to me. Because she can fix the hair properly. But before the day was over, Pastor March, every one of those girls had their hair done. Right. And then she wouldn't let them go to bed with their hair out. Go find one of them old pair of pantyhose. Come on, the ones, the ones, the ones with the run in them. Put a knot on that bad boy. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Pull them pantyhose over their head and say, they just stay all night long. So every y'all ain't talking about you. See, see, you knew this before. Y'all, y'all, I'm sorry, y'all going natural. Just come out 
outside here any time of the way. Where are you going? I don't know, just going. But anyway, anyway, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. And see, my point is, she taught us how to prepare for tomorrow. Listen, if your child is always going to school late, don't blame them. It's your fault. Because right. 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 why is sitting up watching Barney on television or BET all night long? It's your fault because as a mother, you won't make them cut the TV off, get their backside up, get their clothes out, get an iron, come on, for the next day, put it on a hanger someplace, take a shower that night. Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all don't shower at night? You mean y'all go to bed stinking? Oh, Lord, I'm in the wrong church. Come on. Practice, practice. Let's lean to the person by them and say, don't want you, don't want you. <laughs> now, watch this. Look at me. Look at me. This kind of life application, you all, will apply to all of us. Because if you and I don't prepare... For tomorrow, let me help you all out. By the time I finally turn 65, our social security system may be already gone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Now, if it's going to be gone by the time I turn 65, how about my children? We have at least 30 more years to go. What's going to happen to them? Right. The Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Yeah. And one of the problems, you all, in the black community is that most of our kids start from zero. Oh, I know y'all won't say it, but I'm telling the truth. The reason your kids can't go to college or when they go, they come out of college and they already are already $180,000 in debt when they finish school four years. And the bad part about it is because they did not have good study habits Get their best friends with a D. All right. All right. Yeah. And now you wasted all your money, and now you are still in debt trying to figure out, dear God, how in the world I'm going to pay this debt off. It could have been done had you prepared for tomorrow. Oh, right. uh, right. say, say it's tight, but it's right. It's tight, but it's right. All, right. all of us, you have found ourselves asking God for one thing or another. But the question is, what if today was the day that it happened? Consider this. What, Ella Green, what if today was the day God gave you everything you asked for? Come on. Tracy, what happened if today was the day God released in your life everything you've been asking him for? The question is, would the blessing destroy you or would it help? Let me use us for an illustration. What would happen if right now 200 folks woke up in this church and said, Pastor, I want to join? Do we have enough urchins to seat anybody? Do we have people already in place, operating in the place they should be to handle the magnitude? Come on. Do we have enough folks to be there to, to greet them on the way in the door? We can't keep saying, God, get us there when we don't prepare to get there before we get there. All right, all right. This morning, something told me, I, I, I said, I said, oh, baby, why are you wearing that? She said, because I have to rush to get dressed. And I stopped, I said, I guess she ain't seen my sermon today. You mean, you just put that on? to come to church. Now, I'm glad you're here. But I had to prepare last night. All right. Come on, now, come on, right. talk to me. Right. See, see, excuse me, I understand why they're quiet. Because <laughs> some folk didn't get dressed till this morning. All right. All right. Some of y'all got up this morning saying, I wonder what's in my class. What can I put on? You ain't got but four outfits, dear God. What you wear last week? Then don't wear that one. Oh my God. Come on, somebody. And we spend all our time wasting time trying to figure out I want you know what? I knew Tuesday I would wear this today. Now I'm not 
not saying be like your pastor, but you should, but I'm not saying you have to. I'm saying you can save some time. Listen, y'all, time is the one thing in your life you will never get back. Come on. If you lose money, you can make more money, but you can't make more time. Come on. Talk to the person, you can't get time back. Get time back. One of the things you all have learned then is when I have a goal in my mind, my goal keeps me focused. Come on, say, my goal keeps me focused. Come on, say, my goal keeps me focused. Watch this. Sometimes, how many of you have ever been in a storm, driving in the rain, but you were going someplace? Come on. How many of y'all have ever driven before in the rain? Have you noticed that if it's a, a, a major rain, you find yourself focusing more? Come on. You are focusing more because something is happening around you, and now you say, if I take my eyes off the road, I could lose my life. But understand, family, in life, you will always have trouble. None of us are exempt from trouble. I don't care. You, you can pray to your to your brain explode. When you finish, you still got trouble. Come on. You can fast and pray until you lose 100 pounds. When it's all said and done, trouble is going to still be there. And so what you must understand is that you must learn how to focus while trouble is going on around you. See, Paul said in Philippians 3.14, Paul said, I press toward the mark. Paul says, I must remain focused on the prize. Are you hearing me? I must remain focused on the prize. Paul said, the prize is what I'm preparing for. But if I lose it in the turn, my life will be in shambles. And it's not because God didn't give me a promise. See, you all understand this. Listen now. What the devil wants to do is make you believe that because there is turmoil, you're not going to make it. Right. Yes, but would you encourage the person right there and say, even in turmoil, even I'm still going to make it. Come on, say, even in turmoil, you are still going to make it. I wish you would encourage somebody. Come on, say, even in turmoil, you are still going to make it. Baby, I came to speak a word into your life, and I don't care what the devil is doing, and I don't care how the hell I'm the bargain. Let me encourage somebody that, child of God, you are still going to make it. Somebody say, I'm still going to make it. See, watch this. Some of y'all are saying, God, I want a husband. I want to be a wife. My question is, are you preparing to be a wife? You can't give every man you see a lap dance and come on, I want to marry somebody. Come on. Give me a drum roll, son. But I mean, that was good, then. Yeah? I'll say it again. You can't be a, you can't be no runaway girl. Come on, Captain, I'm just testing the water. After a while, somebody gonna drown. Come on. I'm dating this man. I'm dating that man. I'm dating this man. Listen, baby, if listen, if I'm trying to find a wife, I'm gonna find a girl who who all by herself and kind of be everybody's boy a good girlfriend. See what this? When Abraham wanted a girl, a, a, a wife for his son, Abraham sent out his servant. He says, you will know the girl who is good for my son because she'll be suitable for him. And the Bible said when a servant found the girl, he asked the girl to bring him some water. Watch this now. The girl did not only bring the servant some water, but she watered all the camels as well. Now what, this, what the Bible is trying to get us to understand is that this girl had a servant's attitude. Let me come down your road. So if you got a husband that you cannot serve, then you shouldn't be married. Oh, I wish to, but the man's kept this man. I said, if you got a, if you got a, a man you can't serve, then he is not the one to marry. I'm not his slave. Baby, it ain't not been his 
slave? Watch this, because watch this. If you don't serve him, somebody else will service him. Ooh, I'm in a real house today. I say, if you don't service him, somebody else will service him. And you don't wonder how come he got all this overtime? Can I help you out? I know what he... Anyway, I'm, I'm going to go. Now, <laughs> glory to God. Now, this doesn't suggest you all that you spend your time practicing playing house. Because too many of you girls spend your time practicing playing house. When you find a woman tell them, don't practice playing house. Oh, y'all scared. Tell them, don't practice playing house. And if we don't practice playing house, if you can't give me a house, we ain't going to practice playing house. Come on. Well, Pastor, come on and jump on the women. I'm glad you asked. Watch this. See, so this. Oh, dear God. All right. Brothers, if you intend to be a good husband, how many brothers want to be a good husband? You have to be ready to, to prepare yourself, watch this now, by becoming responsible for somebody else besides you. Y'all right. missed that. See, watch this. Adam was good by himself. But God said, it's not good for man to be alone. Because Adam was all one. He was consumed, watch this now, with himself. And God said, this ain't good for this boy. He said, I'm going to give him a woman. Hey, help me. Somebody who can help the boy stay balanced. And so God said, God, what's this? God didn't even ask Adam, do you want a wife? He said, I'm going to put the boy to sleep. And God gave the boy open side surgery. Pulled the rib out of the man's side yes. and took a bone yeah. and formed the one. Right right. I can see Adam Bull breaking the thumb What happened, God? What, what up? What's up? I've been sleeping a long time. Then he woke up and saw Eve. Right. Now, I'd have said, I'd be like, God, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but Adam said, Woman! Whoa. Bone of my bone. Yeah. Flesh of my flesh. He said, oh, God has given me a good thing. But watch this. Before God gave Adam a woman, God had Adam doing something. Y'all yes. yes. right. missed that. He had Adam doing something. Oh, see, y'all playing slow. Okay, okay, okay. If, the, if he unemployed, don't let that nigga kiss on you. Don't let him stay up in your house. Come here, I'm going to get a job eventually. No! Come on, girl, I'm trying to find myself. You already lost, brother. You can't find I, I wish I could get at least three eight men in the house today. Come on. You mean to tell me you want some sorry big lip to stay up in your house and do absolutely nothing while you going to work and work eight hours on another man's job? He stay at home and keep the house warm for you? The devil is a liar. See, the problem you all with me is that we want to stay home and play with our Xbox. You can't keep on playing with toys but what one be respected as a man. Y'all ain't talking back to me today. You can't keep playing boyish games. Listen, watch this. The word, the word play boy suggests that you're still a boy. That don't make you no man because you can make a baby. Come on. She can buy some semen. Lord, I wish they, they were laughing a minute ago, Lord. Thank you, thank you. I'm preaching, I'm preaching. Preach, son, preach. Come on. You want a man who's able to take care of you past the present moment. And if you get sick, he can still provide for you and put food on your table. If you decide you're going to quit tomorrow, the bills will still be paid because he prepared to be a man. Oh, dear God. I'm going to skip to you. 
God gave you right now. Come on, stop. My time is almost gone. Can I quit right now? Oh, stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll finish. I'll finish next week. Give me some quick music. There you go. You all blessed today? Yeah. We didn't get to the mountain top today. 